Paris and I used to work at Nottingham Contemporary. And I'm Rosie Cooper and I'm Head of Exhibitions at the Delaware Pavilion. Hello, I'm Irene Aristizabal, Head of Curatorial and Public Practice at Baltic, and I used to work at Nottingham Contemporary as well with Cedric. And we wanted to thank Catherine, Rachel and Amy for this kind invitation to be part of this um, conference. And it's very interesting for us to speak about this project at this time. Yeah, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> as, as, uh, as we all know, that first um, part of the year has been very challenging. Uh, and it's, it kind of revealed uh, a lot of inequalities uh, as well. Um, and knowing that the last uh, act of, of the exhibition took place in Bristol and uh, that a very important uh, event happened in Bristol uh, recently with the topple down of the Coulson statue, um, it resonates a lot to, to us what's happening uh, right now, obviously. And it also questions what the exhibition tried to do um, going back to histories of resistance from a feminist perspective. Um, and, and I think we also wanted to address um, the fact that, well, it's, it's also challenging in some ways to, 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 to get back to, to that project uh, in terms of uh, energy um, that, is, that it is uh, demanding and also in terms of the fact that some of the things we try to address are so present and palpable um, at the moment. Uh, I don't know if you want to add anything else, Irene or Rosie, on that. Um, I think it's been <laughs> interesting. We've been asked personally um, to speak about this exhibition, either formally or informally, several times over the last month. And I think that the way that the exhibition brought together forms of resistance and emphasize the different scales and approaches that resistance can take is really important. And just thinking about the protests now, um, I know that some people are more able than others and for different reasons now to participate in large scale uprisings like this. Um, and others are, are able to participate in much more sort of intimate um, ways and I think both are extremely important and that was a really sort of foundational principle of Still I Rise as well. But maybe we should say something about the exhibition, how it came about and what it constituted. Irene, do you, yeah. would you like to say something? Um, so the project uh, looked at um, forms of resistance, as Rosie was mentioning, in, um, from different scales and different uh, parts of the world as well. How artists have been looking at um, how queer and queer theory and feminism have influenced how uh, people resist. And um, the exhibition was developed in a way that um, the the ideas in it were reflected as well in, in the process. So it was really key for us to work collaboratively uh, for the three of us, but also with our, um, our practitioners or, such as uh, feminist, architecture, uh, uh, feminist architecture, who worked with us closely on the layout and, and the display, or uh, UMC, who worked closely with us on the publication as well, but also with all the artists and uh, collectives that participated in, in the exhibition. And maybe we can mention as well about the, the different parts, how we shape the different parts. Um, do you want to? Yeah, so we, we, we had, I mean, the, the very base of, of the project was, uh, we knew we, we could not be like uh, exhaustive um, and it was not the point um, and we had the chance to be able to develop the project uh, over three acts um, the first of which happened in Nottingham the second of which at uh, Delawa Pavilion um, and in Bexley on Sea and uh, the last one at Arnold Finney in Bristol um, and that took place between 2019 um, and 2020. Um, well, no, wait, 2018. 
2019. Um, and, um, and, we try to every time kind of address uh, certain certain uh, topics and forms of resistance that were um, responding to the local context. Um, I mean, in Nottingham, there is like a, a rich history of resistance uh, um, through the Luddites, for instance, um, and other movements um, in Bexilancy, Rosie, you were interested in specifically addressing questions related to architecture um, and um, and yeah the very the, the idea the very core of the project was very much to put uh, intersectionality um, and to use it not only as a to not only see it as a subject and something to analyze from afar but really to like put it at the core of our methodology um, and so that kind of um, manifests in, in a lot of different ways um, in the fact that the show doesn't only include uh, visual artists. Um, we, are, we, we, well, we, have, we had designers involved, we had we, we have architecture, architectures, uh, no, architects, sorry. Um, we had um, musicians as well, uh, drag activists, um, Lots of uh, a broad range uh, of of people, um, really, um, and uh, also in terms of how we were using uh, or like how we were dealing with history. I think if if Rosie wants to speak a bit more about this, uh, sure. Um, I think that multiplicity of voices was really important to us. That Cedric, you're um, indicating, and the fact that. Um, you know, the exhibition spanned the 19th century to the present, but also thinking about futures, sometimes futures that we don't know what they're going to look like yet. Um, it's really important to say, I think, that we took a non-chronological approach. Um, instead, we connected ideas and approaches across space and time, showing how feminist and queer struggle happens at different ways in different times and for different reasons. So if you think about feminism in a sort of chronological wave approach you can only really do that with kind of white western feminism which and we realized that that was just such an important thing um to get away from so intersectionality and the way that different forms of oppression can affect different subjects in in a multiplicity of ways um became a really important part of our approach. So yes, that idea of connecting different ideas across space and time can show you that Alice Constance Austin in the beginning of the 20th century was having same thoughts about architecture and the way that the experience of the city um, affects marginalized people and communities. Um, you know, she was thinking the same thing as matrix feminist design in, a, in the 1980s. So a lot of these ideas never had the opportunity to move beyond kind of queer and feminist thought. So it was really important for us to kind of group together ideas and practices that could show how much further we still need to, to go. And mm. it was also a way of uh, thinking and developing the exhibition from a non-hierarchical point of view and really grounding the process and uh, the ideas um, within that the hierarchization but also non-linearity that Rosie it's, it is mentioning and um, sort of a, a horizontal um, approach to, to working together and which was also reflected in the way certain artists or certain um, groups and most of the artists and most most of the uh, the collectives presented in the exhibition um, embody these ideas of collaboration and and nonlinearity and um, 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 horizontal yeah. rather than vertical ways of working together. Yeah, and, I think. And that takes us to your second question in relation to um, to the importance of working with groups um, for the exhibition. And as we have been mentioning until now, um, this idea of 
collectivity of coming together of um, ways of being together that are alternative to um, capitalist and neoliberal um, social structures was was really key and central to to the development of of the exhibition and to to the presentation as well mm. you also think, were really oh sorry cedric go ahead i think one, one of the things that is very important to mention in relation to that whole to the way we dealt with um history and geographies is very much that we try to um we try to adopt uh, a non-positivist view on on the history, on the idea of feminism, uh, and and Rosie, you were mentioning this idea of waves, um, and I think it's very important to 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 yeah. Generally, exhibitions tend to when they at, approach uh, social political subjects, uh, adopt a chronological and linear perspective to imply that there is a progress, um, and and one of our own anchor point for us was actually uh, the Paris Commune, for instance, uh, and we were interested, I mean, the very base uh, of, the, of, the, of the project and even its designer was to kind of um, establish a connection between um, Occupy uh, and the Ignatos, Indignados movements, um, which were like occupation uh, urban uh, uh, movements, uh, and tie that to uh, the Paris Commune and the women played in the Paris Commune beyond uh, Louise Michel only, uh, which was a very kind of uh, beginning of uh, the show at Nottingham Contemporary, for instance. Um, and I think that says a lot in terms of, yeah, how we, we, we try to, to also work uh, with other people, but also uh, trigger institutional change uh, as well. I think the other thing about not um, is that often chronological presentation somehow implies some type of consensus. And actually, mm. one of the really important things in the exhibition was that we wanted to show the moments where feminism rubs up against itself. So the Glen Belverio, um, Glenda and Camilla go downtown, shows this big, it's, it's um, with Camille Paglia, and it shows this big sort of disagreement in the street between sex positive and anti-porn feminist movements. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of fight breaks out that it almost becomes a fist fight. And showing those moments where kind of class, um, you know, middle class and working class feminists uh, rub up against each other and how you can actually learn for extremely positively from the experiences of other people within the movement. Um, mm -hmm but how others don't feel that they want to learn. All of those moments of disagreement were incredibly important for us to show as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess that also brings us to your last question in relation to um, our approach to curating. And um, we have worked collaboratively on, on this project and we all have uh, very um, practices that are grounded within collaboration very much but in 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 different ways so maybe this is we're going to each of us briefly mention um how how we see our our curatorial practice <laughs> from the point of view of a feminist practice as well um Let and start. maybe sure. yeah <laughs> i guess um, um very briefly, um, I don't um, sort of, um, I haven't, th I, I had not really thought of myself as a feminist curator before starting working on, on, on the Still I Rise project. Um, but it was a really interesting project as a um, to to reconsider uh, my curatorial practice and uh, to consider what position as a, as a curator what position do i want to take as a curator within society and um really make be my, being mindful of um of of my voice and the weight of my voice and um 
and the weight that I have when I choose to work with an artist or another. Um, and I would now call myself, um, I, I would see myself as someone um, working within a feminist practice of curating. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna go yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I think for me, uh, I don't I don't know if I if I if I would say that I have a feminist practice uh, in terms of creating or whether I try to implement. Um, feminist methodologies when I work as a curator. I, I don't really know what's the kind of, uh, but um, definitely for sure they, they, there is a connection that happens when I work now between the content um, that I try to put out um, and the kind of um, structure that I, that I work within uh, as well. Um, and so it's always about questioning that. It's always about, about questioning power structures, power redistribution, um, and and yeah, positionality. As as Irene was mentioning, being aware of where you're speaking from um, is oh yeah, some something that now is like crucial <laughs> to the beginning and the start of a project for me. So in terms of feminist curatorial practice. Um, I think it's a methodology that starts really with the idea that curating is a form of knowledge production and making meaning in the world. And I think what that means is that we're all contributing to the visibility of certain narratives, individuals, groups and perspectives. And we just have a responsibility to decide which ones they are. Um, and I think that feminist responsibility is to acknowledge, question, challenge, address and dismantle unequal power structures and to support others in doing the same. I think that we need to think always about not only what we do but how we do it and how we work with care, um, who we work with and who we work for. Um, and I think the three of us all work in institutions that have resources and every time we use those resources we need to ask who we're sharing them with in a way that benefits the construction of an equal society that has freedom at its heart so yeah mm. for me that's what being a feminist curator means yes well thank you all and um thank you for the invitation again yes thank you